Good morning, everyone. Let's see, let me get this stand right. Um, it's such an honor to be here this morning. Uh, I want to thank NATO and everyone from Creative Time. <clears throat> there were 22 homicides of transgender women in 2015, including 19 black or Latina trans women, the most ever recorded in one year. Sadly, 2016 has already seen at least 20 transgender people fatally shot, stabbed, or killed by other violent means. This is a community under siege. It's a state of emergency for trans women and trans feminine folk of color. The disproportionate levels of violence trans women of color face pains me. And so the pervasive, and so does the pervasive framing of trans womanhood being directly linked to images of victimhood and tragedy. It hurts that our names are often amplified only when we are dead, gone, inactive. We can't only celebrate trans women of color in memoriam. We must begin uplifting trans women of color, speaking their names and praises in their lives. That's a quote from Janet Mock. Today I want to talk about the role of trans women activists in occupying our future. I want to talk about a body of work I made called Whose Feminism Is It Anyway? which focuses on trans liberation. This project, started last year, is only just a beginning. Um, I made a video called Roundtable Discussion in a single channel, it's a single channel video projected onto a large 13 foot long screen made of ribbons. Um, it's based on a conversation I organized with Patrice Cullors, who is one of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter, and um, trans activists Cece McDonald and Genesette Gutierrez. It was at Otis College of Art and Design in the graduate studios for the graduate public practice program. The programming of these types of events in curriculum of art pedagogy is a reminder of the compatibility of art and activism. Um, you can see this is a quote from um, the Black Lives um, Matter manifesto. It's, it's an amazing site. It's, um, I read it over and over again. This is a statement on transgender um, affirmation. I'm, so this is, let's see, I gotta push play here. This is um, a, this is, this is a clip of Patrice Cullors speaking about the importance of disruption and challenging the narratives of respectability. I'm gonna talk about, there's so much to talk about, but I think what I'll talk about uh, this evening is the role of disruption and why I think it's absolutely necessary and the work that we're doing. And um, so much about the disruption that's happened at least in this current movement, is about challenging respectability, is about challenging the narrative that we have to show up in suits and dresses and we have to fit in the gender binary and we have to be these things that the civil rights movement was and that in reality, uh, we're creating a whole new movement that's largely led by queer folks and trans folk and that we don't actually fit in the gender binary, that we don't fit in the sort of Christian respectability politics and that is what's powerful about this movement. That's what's exceptional about this movement. And so I think for me, the disruption piece has been so critical because our communities are in a state of emergency. And when we uh, live inside this country that is just so committed to apathy, and so committed to mediocrity, and so committed to not actually challenging the status quo, that we have to push ourselves to do so. I think um, the disruption piece is uh, necessary and it's important and it, it's what transforms. It's the only reason why the three of us sitting up here is even important. It's because people have disrupted. It's not because people sort of sat down with political and elected officials and negotiated shit behind doors. It's because we openly and publicly said this shit is not okay and this is what actually matters and this is who actually matters and these are the ways you must show up in this moment. <laughs> wow. 
In 2012, at the May Day March in Los Angeles, I first learned about the Translatina Coalition, led by the amazing Bambi Salcedo. This is Bambi here. <clears throat> the Translatina <clears throat> Coalition's purpose is to address the unique and specific challenges and needs of trans Latinas who live in the United States, working with policymakers, and supporting organizations. They find solutions to the unique needs of trans Latinas and create structural changes to better the quality of, their quality of life. The Trans Latina Coalition enacts <clears throat> Diane's shutting down major intersections in Los Angeles at rush hour, demanding dignity, safety, and justice. The main work of this project is a collaboration with the amazing artist and organizer, Addie Tunnell. This is Addie right here. Um, uh, we made full-length, eight-foot-tall photos portraying crucial American activists, all trans women of color. We're trying to create powerful images of women that celebrate their political voices. Trans liberation, beauty is in the street, Johanna Saavedra was inspired by the Situationist graphic from Paris, this one, 1968. But it also recalls the black trans activist Marsha P. Johnson throwing the first brick at the Stonewall riots. Johanna, who immigrated to the U.S. from Guadalajara, Mexico, is a well-respected activist and Northwest co-chair of the Translatina Coalition, bringing attention to unjust conditions and violence, fa violence faced by trans women in ICE detention centers. Trans liberation, visibility is not enough. Cece McDonald <clears throat> is based on an IWW poster designed by Walter Crane honoring the Paris Commune. Cece was unjustly incarcerated in a men's prison for defending herself against a racist, transphobic assault in July 2012. While in prison, she educated herself on issues of trans liberation, the prison industrial complex, and the intersections of racism, patriarchy, and classism. Laverne Cox says that her role on Orange is the New Black is an homage to Cece. You being black, you're aggressive. You being black, you're angry. You being black is destructive. So I can't run from that. You being trans is immoral. You being trans is improper. You being trans is wrong. I can't run from those things because I, I'm constantly being reminded of that. So instead of not owning those labels, I own them with pride. You know what I'm saying? I own them with resilience. I own them with love because it's easy being white in America. Because your your life isn't questioned. You, if you didn't want to live in a label, you didn't have to. If you want to live under any label, you could. <laughs> because you were white and you were allowed that privilege. I'm fighting for people just to see me and for me to be visible as a black trans A Cuban International Women's Day poster from 1972 was the inspiration for the photo, this photo of um, Genesette Gutierrez. Genesette is an undocumented trans activist based in Los Angeles, a founding member of Familia, trans queer liberation movement. Her activist work centers on detained, undocumented trans women and their <clears throat> communities. One of her actions went viral last year when her interruption of President Obama at the White House brought visibility to the torture and violence of trans undocumented in detention centers. So, um, I, I, spoke, I spoke up and said President Obama released uh, all LGBTQ detainees in detention center. President Obama stopped the abuse and torture trans women are facing in detention centers. And you know, I'm a transgender woman, I am undocumented, and I am tired of the abuse that we are facing. I'm tired of the transphobia. I'm tired of the crime that we're facing, right? So it was more, not just detention centers, but I wanted to put emphasis on that because 
this is an issue that many members in my own community don't see it as an uh, LGBTQ issue, right? Immigration, if you're undocumented, you need to be left out of the conversation. So hopefully with that interruption, I'm forcing, like Sissy mentioned, the intersectionality piece. I know that we are part of the community. We have a voice and we are a powerful community that needs to be heard and part of the conversation. Okay, so I'm 33. <laughs> I'm, three, I'm like 38 seconds over. I'm just going to read a couple more sentences. The feminist movement is momentarily fragmented over heated debates about the inclusion of transgender women. women. This project takes the political position that for the advancement of feminism, the movement must embrace trans feminism. As Amy Koyama writes, trans feminism embodies feminist coalition politics in which women from different backgrounds stand up for each other. Because if we don't stand for each other, nobody will. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you so much, darling. <laughs> We're both from L.A. I was born and raised there. You've been living there since 1990. Yeah. And I, I just, if, if I may, I'd like to just ask you, how has living in L.A. informed your, your work? I mean, I think it's changed my work entirely. Um, I also lived in an apartment in Tijuana for a long time, so constantly crossing the border and just, there's just such... A wide range of people. I think the kind of my radical politics were kind of like formed. <laughs> you know, just it's I'm so lucky to have gotten out of the little town of Ohio and just experienced. <laughs> so yeah, I know here on Ohio, um, you know, and and ha you know you get just experience such so many different cultures and so many different people. I think really changed my life. Thank you. Thank it's, you so much. Your performance was amazing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>